All right, guys and girls and whatnot, I'm here again. Uh, this is the second take of the video. It's a shame because on the first take, I had a huge, huge tangent that I thought was an interesting thing brought up, but I have now forgotten what I was talking about. So, plus it's not something that comes out naturally, and that's when tangents are the best, is when you're just thinking on the spot, I guess. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but I... I mean, at least I can get to the point in this video, and in, that is mainly looking at two things, um, both games that are very similar, and um, one of them kind of starting to grow quite popular, but hasn't reached the same level as the other, both very similar games, and that is Rivals of Aether and... Smash 4. I mean, Rivals of Aether has a lot of potential at the moment because it is a game that hasn't really actually been released, yet we're already seeing tournaments for it. And it is a, also a game where those tournaments have not been forced down, forced, um, down in the, forced, like, emphasized in the game. So, like, when you play a game like Smite, it's a great game. But you can tell they're really pushing for the tournament thing. They're not like just sitting back and going, well, if tournaments happen, if tournaments happen. Um, Rivals of Aether certainly, um, it does have, it does push a bit, uh, try and enforce tournament, like pushes tournament play to some extent. Like it follows the whole, if you watch um, Smash tournaments, they're able to disable certain levels and whatnot. That's in this game as well. Um, but overall, they're not saying this is made for tournaments, which is what I always get with Smite. I mean, I've only played it a couple of times, but it always just feels like they're really hoping to get pe more and more people playing in tournaments. They're, they're really pushing for the tournament play. Riles of Aether is kind of kicking back and saying, if it happens, it happens, and it is happening. Whether it lasts long is another question. I mean, uh, PlayStation will start Battle Royale is another game similar to Rivals and Smash. Um, it had, uh, look, I wasn't part of the community and this is what I've overheard, it had a strong presence the of tournaments and like just community, but like after a couple of years it just kind of died down and that could happen with Rivals and funnily enough Smite, it could happen, not saying it will, but it's a shame it had Smite because they've really focused on that. Um, rather than just having also a safety net, so just people that play it for fun. People do play Smite for fun, but they don't... They're always pushing for, you know, ton play. But enough about me blabbing on about a game I've barely played, and probably not 100% correct with. But yeah, we're going to go back to the topic, and that is looking at Smash 4 and Rivals of Aether. I'll start off with Rivals, since it is the... Um, shortest segment of the video when it comes to this just discussion and basically if you have played rivals you, have, you will notice that there's really four elements in the game uh, sorry four elemental classes there's if you can call it that fire which which has the a character based on the fire element and the character based on the smoke element earth character based on rock character based on botany and like trees and whatnot um air character based on wind or air and a character based on thunder and finally we have water where we have um we have only one character which is based on water and there's yet to be a new character related to that element um and the thunder one was only announced for, like last month and it hasn't actually been released onto the game, but I did play it at an expo, and I've got to say, it's a fun character to play with. A lot of the characters are fun to play with, apart from the smoke element. I just, uh, the character that's the uh, smoke element, because I, I just can't get the hang of him. So yeah, I was thinking, so what elements will be, what element, what potential elements could be the second order uh, representative? And really I came up with two. One being ice, which is a bit, I don't know, the problem with that is it's just kind of an evolution of water. It's not like, 
it's just water in cold temperatures basically so yeah I guess like with fire sm smoke is created by fire water ice is kind of created by water but yeah but it's it's a bit different to the relationship of fire and smoke in my eyes um, I can't pin down it and to be honest like we already have I think the grass uh, or but but yeah the grass um, character in the earth section has a lot of attacks that f freeze the opponent which to some extent is the main element of freeze of ice sorry like ice it, it would be odd for the ice moveset not to involve um, freezing people one cool thing though if ice does happen is I hope we get like a proper sword fighter like I know the uh, the smoke element character um, I really should know these names I only know Rastor and Crag um, and Zeta Burn so I know a couple and Maple but yeah anyway the um, smoke uh, character he, he does have a sword but it doesn't feel like a sword fighter in my eyes it feels just like a normal attack I mean I, I'm really hoping to find a character that has that unique m m move set that Rivals is delivering but also for its standard attacks or its smash attacks or its tilts and everything it's just like using a sword um, and maybe that could be the foundation of its special attack so it's sword involved it involves a sword and it somehow the special attacks do something unique with the sword but yeah no I'm really craving for that because I really really enjoy playing Marth in Smash 4. A lot of my friends they say you should stop playing Marth, he's not that good. And I go, yeah, I know I lose I lose a lot against the Ness character say. And um But I'll still continue playing Marth. Not because I want to win, but because I enjoy him. He's a lot of fun. Sword fighters are a lot of fun and I love the tip mechanic. Um uh, so you probably know that I'll be pumped for Cloud when that comes out. Um yeah, so that, that's covering one of the elements. And the other element that's kind of important, uh, kind of related to water, and it's even it could even like go into the land um, elemental tree, um, and that is sand. Sand is um, kind of related to water, generally, because we associate beaches with water. Um, as for how you could use it, uh, make a unique moveset with sand I'm a bit confused how the only thing I can think of is some sort of like shape morphing so the character you know it turns into sand and sand you know changes and the whole um, hitbox and uh, just just generally like the hitbox is constantly changing so when you do a tilt he might appear um, he, the sand his appearance will change when you do a tilt attack, um, his, his body shape will be completely different. I can't think of an example of how to describe it. But yeah, but basically his attacks also cause his body to change. Um, and that's all I can really think of with sand. And honestly, between the two, I am thinking for some reason sand is going to be the more likely character to be added to the roster. And as for DLC, which is really really this is really really early days the game practically hasn't been uh, the, the full version hasn't even been released but um, I was just thinking that what would be appropriate for DLC is maybe um, although it's not really an element it can kind of pass as one and that's just having a dark and light character um, yeah I mean that's to it that's all it is because I mean the second they add a new character in the fire um, elemental tree uh, I don't know if you, I'm using elemental tree correctly but you know the elemental group the second they release uh, a fire character they have to release another character for each other element really they, they don't have to but I mean it would just seem a bit out of uh, out of balance I guess and so yeah I think the DLC we might see a darker light character I mean I don't really want to be focusing on DLC at this stage I mean it's fair enough to talk about the second water character just because it's already been hint it's already pretty evident that there there will be another one because there's a question mark right next to um, 
the uh, original water character, which I, I can't remember um, the name of. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's all that's all I got for Rivals. I think it has a lot of potential to be a popular game. I mean, it's been released on Xbox and PC, and both of them don't really have a strong uh, Smash Bros. clone like really ever. Um, uh, and PlayStation, it might come out later, and I hope it does, just because it's more supporters. But well, and Wii U, of course, but it'd be hard to even sell on Wii U, I'd assume. But I mean, at least with PlayStation, they already have a um, Smash clone, and people are gonna hate me for saying that. But PlayStation will back all, all Star Battle Royale. Might not be a Smash clone, but it's without doubt it was influenced by Smash Bros. I know there's like a definitely a change in get, like the mechanics the kind of life mechanics and stuff um, I'm not too familiar with the game but I mean if you say there's no smash um, influence then I think uh, you're a bit delusional sorry to, sorry to put it bluntly but it's the way I see it so I've written now ranted on about rivals which was meant to be short but we're going to move on to an even bigger one um, and that is Smash Bros. DLC, um, which is fair enough to talk about because that's all that's coming that's new. Um, and I'll first of all start off with the announcement that would have been two or three days ago. When this is uploaded, it will be even longer. And basically, if you're not aware, Cloud from Final Fantasy VII is in. And I'm happy, another sword fighter. As I mentioned before, I love my math. Um, I was actually surprised. I knew. I was hoping Square Enix would have a representative, but I wasn't actually expecting a protagonist from Final Fantasy just because most of them appear in a couple of games and maybe the odd spin-off, um, which crosses universes, but they're not like kind of just a reoccurring character in the main series. And so I was expecting like a Chocobo, which would have been really hard to do, but it's the Dark Mage or Black Mage, um, someone like that would would kind of could have would have had moveset potential. I mean, I think characters have a lot more the, the protagonists and the support uh, and the people that uh, go with them have a lot more moveset potential. But I know just I just thought it would it would have been a um, something that was more reoccurring in the um, standalone series, not like you know all the spin-off series that they've got like Final Fantasy Tactics or Theater Rhythm and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, with looking at that trailer, there was um, there was a mention at the end that there would be an announcement uh, specifically for Smash in December, and that really um, this is all speculation. This isn't fact, but I think there are two possible things they're going to announce um, during this uh, presentation. The first is a, uh, which could, I think is quite possible to happen, is a virtual console. I don't know if, I've forgotten if we you call it virtual, con uh, virtual console, but um, basically Super Smash Bros. Melee on Wii U. Not a HD version like Twilight Princess or um, uh, Wind Waker. Hopefully we'll get a Metroid Prime HD, but that's another story. But um, you know, a virtual console on a on Super Smash Bros. Melee because it's still a popular game, and I don't know, just may as well throw it on there. I mean, I don't understand why they haven't. It's such a. It was one of the best selling games on GameCube, if not maybe the best. I can't remember, but it was certainly up there. Um, and if that's not the case, I think we'll be seeing characters that are that have been that have been. Um, uh, in development before the ballot, ballot. Um, whether or not um, they were popular um, during the ballot, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but um, yeah, if they're, um, they don't have to be necessarily popular on the ballot because they were developed before the whole ballot thing. And the two that really come up um, in my mind are Chibi Robo and Ri a Riven he Heaven um, protagonist, not protagonist, representative. Um, only because 
these get these ca- sorry these characters have had some sort of support and I think reasonably large, but they're definitely not in the top five. Maybe one of them in the top ten. Who knows? Uh, no one actually knows uh, the ballot results only because, and it's evident because if you look at Reddit, the ballot the polls are completely different to the ones of the Smash Bros. Um, but one thing's for certain, I don't think they're going to announce the ballot results yet. Um, well, it's not for certain, but I think it would be an odd move. Like, I think that should come out maybe after a couple of ballot characters have been announced. Like, because releasing the results kind of, um, kind of, uh, kind of ruins the surprise of future characters. You kind of got more of an understanding. It's like basically like that. So I don't think the ballot will be, the results will come out. Uh, once again, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, but I don't think the results will come, will come out for a while. And I also think uh, this next DLC character, if they announce it in this Friday Smash, uh, December Smash update, um, I think like Nintendo are going to use, this is really Nintendo's, it's not really their last opportunity, but it would make sense for the next DLC character, the fu- the next DLC character, to be the final character that they don't that they don't have to feel necessary to limit to um, the ballot results. If that makes sense, so basically they don't they can just make, choose any character, and there's no kind of feeling of oh well, maybe I should put you know King K Rule or Isaac in instead of this character. This was a character that was made in um, that had been already made before the results. Um, but then after, I think this character, if it's announced in December, I think we'll start seeing um, majority of the DLC characters um, being a result of the ballot. Um, I would see, I think K. Rule has a really strong chance. I hope he does, and it'd be awesome to see K. Rule and Dixie Kong. DLC pack only with maybe a DK level, but the only reason why I say that is that DK really lacks its represents uh, representatives. It only has two, yet it's like one of the most significant games in Nintendo history. And another character that I'm pretty sure we'll see is the Inklings, just because of Splatoon's success. And I think that will definitely come with a stage, uh, Inkopolis, or just um. Yeah, Inkopolis, I think, would probably be the most likely one. But, you know, other arenas that you fight in um, do have potential, but, you know, Inkopolis is just, like, the centre. Um, but I do think there will be the odd character that's not related to Ballot. Um, I think Snake will be decided to be added in regardless of his popularity. But another one that I think of is, uh, is Nintendo starting you to... Um, introduce an indie rep so much like the retro rep it, it'll continue um, it'll continue in each smash but in each smash there'll generally only be one added so with um, and once again this is all speculation so um, but you see like with uh, Melee they had a game watch uh, actually in fact we'll start off at Smash 64 it was Ness kind of that was the retro character Although uh, F Zero might have been um, even older, Melee they introduced Game Watch, Brawl they introduced Rob, and in Smash Four they released um, uh, Duck Hunt Duo. And so I think um, the indie rep will be very similar in the fact that they just release one character each game, and that's the that's the rep for that for that um, for that game. I also think it will be a different cri- uh, criteria of, of why they add an indie rep. It won't be necessarily have to be an iconic indie rep, but I think they would then generally add a character that's had strong uh, a strong relationship with Nintendo, maybe, and um, just a, has some sort of popularity. So, Shovel Knight or Shantae are like the two big ones, I think. Um, and I'm pretty sure Shovel Knight's been deconfirmed. Um, but, you know, a game similar to that, um, or even this Runbo game, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't really follow many indie games, but pick up Lone Survivor. Uh, as for stages um, returning in the future, the, the obvious one is Phantoms, Fountains of Dreams, um, only because 
it, I'm not sure if I'm going to forget the right name because I haven't played Melee in ages, but um, it seems to be a very popular one and it's just, it's a good stage. It's nothing bad with it. Um, Wolf, I'm sure we will see Wolf. Whether or not um, Nintendo use it uh, to market Star Fox Zero is... Um, uh, is just up in the air like I mean they could they couldn't and that goes also with the Zelda 30th anniversary next year I'm really hoping that creates a um, that creates a uh, a lot of like a lot of Zelda characters into the game like Impa Tetra or maybe a Hyrule character um, and just all released in one pack to release, to celebrate the 30th anniversary. But I'm saying that Mario, uh, Mario had an anniversary recently, I think it was this year even, and um, we didn't see any new characters, um, any new Mario reps, but in saying that, um, uh, in saying that, uh, like Mario already had a lot of additions, so they might have felt, oh, there's no point adding a new one. Because it was about two, which is a lot, kind of, we were game, especially for a game that has the most number of representatives, although it's kind of justified because it's Mario. Um, I do think, like, a lot of Zelda characters are in order to balance it a bit, because Zelda is pretty damn big. Like, just as, not just as big as Mario, but it's definitely probably second or third in popularity. Um, and, you know, we may see these characters being announced around Twilight Princess HD or Zelda, the new Zelda, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. I think it's just going to be more marketing towards the fact it's the 30th anniversary rather than, oh, look, there's Twilight Princess HD. Here's some Zelda characters. And although I haven't played Twilight Princess, I'm pretty sure, like, majority of the significant characters have been um, already released as assist trophies, which is the main one being Minna. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, I've just realised I've been shaking, moving the chair a bit, so you'll be hearing the little uh, banging in the background. Um, it's just a matter of me getting the hang of stuff, but yeah, I will say that's probably it for now. Um, uh, enjoy. <laughs>